Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, today I'm going to make uh, chicken curry with rice um, and some greens and also uh, I am going to attempt to do naan bread. I, um, I sometimes do it but normally if I'm just doing my weekday chicken curry meal I, I don't bother. Uh, you can buy naan bread in the frozen part of the supermarket for oh not too much um, and that might be a better bet for a weekday but today um, you know oh, we're on lockdown so I've got a bit of time it doesn't actually take that much longer anyways it's only a, mm, I don't know probably adds another 20 minutes to to your, to your dinner um, prep so it's a little bit but it's not um, overly arduous now there's a couple of things that you may or may not have one is um, this looks really dirty by the way but it's not it's it's clean uh, this is a pizza stone basically what it is it's just a like a really a ter terracotta I think like um, it can get really really hot and so it cooks from your uh, bread your your naan bread from the bottom and from the top or your pizza from the bottom and from the top you can buy a terracotta um, tile from from my team for not very much or uh, lots of people actually give these away or sell them on like Facebook um, or trade me sites um, I've had this for ages hence why it's got um, stains on it but I assure you it is clean now the tip about this is you need to put it in the oven while the oven's cold and it heats up with the oven and then you leave it in there so it cools down with the oven otherwise it could potentially crack if you chuck it in there cold into a real hot oven um, or vice versa so I'm putting it in there now and I'm heating my oven up um, then I'm going to start on my curry and I'll let that simmer away I'll show you that in a sec okay so my chicken curry ingredients I've got uh, an onion I've got a couple of cloves of garlic there and I chop them up in a second um, over here I have a tin of tomatoes, chopped tomatoes, I have cumin and paprika, paprika obviously my two standards, I have curry powder, mild, um, I have uh, coriander and garam masala, um, you don't have to have those, I just like the taste of them, they're really good, and then I also have a uh, star anise, so um, I used to, um, buy like a, a korma chicken curry packet or a butter chicken curry packet and I used to use those but I find they have quite a lot of sugar in them so I just make my own now um, and it's, um, it's, it's pretty good so I start off with the basic procedure of how to make this work is I, I put onion, uh, sorry, oil in the um, frying pan then I brown up, um, cook my uh, onion and garlic together till they're nice and translucent um, or a little bit soft and then I um, put in my spices and I just heat them through, don't let them burn. And then in goes the to chopped tomatoes. Um, once that's all looking amazing, um, add a bit of salt, um, then I'll put in my chicken as well. Um, I, you can use chicken thighs, you can use chicken breasts, but what I've got today is um, Countdown was having a special on the diced chicken. So I've got that, it's all ready to go. Uh, I don't even need to cut it. So um, that's what I'll do in a second. And I've also got jug boiling because um, I'll show you how I'll do the rice once that's boiled. Okay, so uh, jug's just boiled. It's always quicker to boil than the jug than in the saucepan. I've got no why. And uh, I'm just going to put into my saucepan here, my big saucepan, um, uh, I don't know, half, half the amount. It's not that important. Put it on. I don't know if you can see or not what I'm doing. And then um, I use basmati rice. Um, it's one of the best ones. I and uh, for us three, I normally use about a cup. Uh, because I'm doing naan bread as well, I probably won't need as much. So I'll just use just under a cup. And um, oh, pretty much what that's in there. And I'll chuck that in there. Um, now this, this version of cooking rice I um, modified and borrowed from the way Jamie Oliver does it. Um, basically I put that in there. When they start, when the grains start dancing, I time five minutes. Um, and then I will drain that and I'll show you how I do that in a second. So I'll make sure I put salt in there. This method takes about 15 to 20 minutes. Um, it shouldn't take long for them to start dancing because that water was already boiling. So um, 
Just give it a quick stir so it doesn't go all stick together. Um, I will leave that. And when it starts starting, dancing, I'll time five minutes and then I'll show you what I do after that. Okay, so the onions are um, looking pretty good. And now I'm just going to add my spices. So I'm going to turn it down a bit. I don't want them to burn. I do want them to heat through. So heaps of cumin. Oh, a teaspoon of cumin. A teaspoon of paprika. And a teaspoon of curry powder. Now since I've got curry powder today, I won't put in turmeric because there's heaps of um, turmeric and curry powder. I'll put a couple of these in, star anise. You may or may not like the taste of those, but um, I do. Garam masala is a good one for um, any kind of meat dishes. And then coriander, um, definitely a classic. Put in a half, half a teaspoon of that and the, um, another one. So I'll turn it back up. So you want them to, to warm through. And that basically becomes your curry paste really. Um, I'm not a, an um, authentic Indian, so this is just my take on it, clearly. So yeah, you want that to, that smells so yum. And then, once that's warmed through, I'm going to add my tomatoes. And that goes from frying now to I'm also going to add a little bit of salt. Tomatoes take um, absorb a lot of salt, so that'll go in there as well. And then I'll, I'll check the salt later. Well, once it's getting close, I'll taste it and see if I need to add a little bit more. But um, with the chopped tomatoes, I just try and get rid of the, the lumps, and then I can let that simmer for as long as I want. Um, not too, don't let it get too um, thick. That's not too bad like that and then I'm going to add the chicken in in a second and let that um, just cook through while I'm just letting that simmer I'll come back over to my um, rice it's been uh, dancing in here for five minutes um, so I will um, show you what I do next with that okay so my rice has been um, boiling in the in that pot for five minutes and grab my colander. It's obviously got holes smaller than my rice. I'm going to throw it in the sink and then I'm going to drain it. I then um, just grab all that. You've got to get the rice out of there because you don't want it to, to burn in there. The rice is soft, it's not totally cooked. Then I'm going to add my um, rest of my water and back into there. Um, about five centimetres worth, put that back on the heat. Grab my tin foil. If you had a lid for your colander, you wouldn't need the tin foil, but I don't have a lid for my colander. So I go um, like this. Now I'm going to put that on top of my um, water over here. Pretty much. What that does is like steams the rice. So I've basically parboiled it. I'm now going to steam it. I'll let it steam for about 10 minutes and then I'll leave it and it'll go all nice and yummy. Okay, so you can see I've added my chicken. I'll let that cook, um, let it simmer there for, I can leave it for 10, 15 minutes. And um, I'm going to turn my attention to the bread. Um, Sometimes what I do, if I wasn't making naan bread, what I'll do is I'll chop up kumra into little into little cubes, and then I'll pub, um, cook that in the microwave or in a saucepan so it's like t tender, and then I'll add that into here as well. It just um, helps to um, kind of pad out the curry, and also I'm trying to be a little bit less have a little bit less carbs, so I'd have that instead of rice. Um, so that's also a nice addition. But I'm going to let that just a little simmer there and I'm going to start on my naan bread. Okay, so here's my recipe for naan bread. It has no yeast and it's gluten-free. Um, so I'm using the same flour. 
that I used for um, pancakes the other morning. So it's gluten-free self-raising flour. And um, instead of buttermilk today, I'm going to be using plain yogurt. So I'll start on that now. Okay, so I have my flour in here, uh, one and two thirds of a cup of self-raising gluten-free flour. And it says three quarters of a cup of buttermilk. Uh, I don't have buttermilk. Um, I've just got plain yogurt, plain thick yogurt that I made last night. Um, so there's no flavouring in here, no sugar in here. It's real thick, a lot thicker than buttermilk. So I'm going to put in half a cup to start with. And, um, and then add another one if it's, uh, it's going to be alright. And I'll turn it into a dough. If it's too thick, I'll add a little bit of water. If it's not quite right, I'll add in a little bit more yogurt. Okay, so I did use uh, three quarters of a cup of um, yogurt in the end. So uh, I have uh, my, it's quite sticky. I probably need to add a little bit more flour. And it looks very white. That's because uh, most gluten-free flour is made out of rice flour. Rice is white. Um, and top tapioca flour. So um, I'm going to chuck it on here. I need to knead that into, it's, it's a bit, still a bit sticky, so uh, I will just knead that into a, um, a workable dough. And uh, then I'm going to divide it into six pieces, six balls. And then I'm going to roll those six balls out to be about the size of a, I don't know, small plate, small piece of naan bread. And, um, then they're going to go one at a time onto my, or two at a time onto my pizza um, stone, which is in the oven. And the oven's set at 250, so it's quite hot. Okay, so that's a much more workable dough now. Obviously, you can see it's not so sticky. It's, um, I've kneaded that into a nice dough, roll, um, ball that can roll on my bench without getting stuck. So that's what you want it to look like. Um, I don't have a rolling pin, so I'm just going to use a wine bottle. I'm going to divide that into six, and then I'm going to roll them out, um, pop them on a plate, ready to go. Okay, so I've got my balls here. Um, I'm just flattening them out. I gave up on the rolling idea. It's a silly idea. Don't bother with that. Um, so I'm just flattening them out. You don't want them too thin, so about that size. They're not as big as the ones you get at um, like an Indian restaurant or whatever. But, um, and what I'm going to do when I finish these is um, I'll do a couple of them at a time straight onto the pizza stone and um, and you just watch them and then as soon as they bubble you, you flip them over um, and it's pretty hot so it's, um, it's not easy work but it's pretty good. So I'll show you that bit in a sec. Okay, so I turned my attention back to my curry. As you can see, it's quite thick now. I've let uh, most of that liquid kind of um, evaporate and the chicken's cooked. So I have uh, cream here. I'm just going to use 250 ml. So this is a 500 ml, but I'm just going to use 250 ml. I'll stir that in and I'll just let it um, just heat through. You don't want it to boil its nuts off. Um, and then pretty much I'll taste it, see if it needs any more salt. If it does, put a little bit more in. Otherwise, this is ready to go. Okay, so I'm nearly done. Um, last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some butter and I'm going to put it in a, melt it in a microwave so that it's ready to put over um, my naan bread as soon as it comes out the oven. The naan bread is not going to take very long to cook at all, so my curry and my rice is ready to go. Um, I was going to do some greens. I can't bother tonight. Um, I've run out of time. But I often um, will do cabbage uh, with cumin seeds and stuff to go with this meal. Um, or I might do broccoli, which is very Indian, you know. Um, sometimes I do peas, but tonight we're going without veggies because I've spent all my time making the bread. Alright, so I'm going to chuck my first two lots of um, naan bread. Oh, yeah, that's what, into the oven. Um, I don't know if you can see, but my pizza rub, pizza stone, I'll just... Drop it down so you can. No, you can't. There it goes. Okay. Pete is going straight onto the pizza stone, just like that. Probably do three. That'll save me a bit of time. Uh, close the oven. And I'll 
I'll wash that and flip it over in a minute. All right, so you can see that these are um, puffed up. So I'm going to pull them out and flip them over. Ouch, they're hot. Ah, bugger. Uh, they probably could have left them a little bit longer, actually. Not quite so brown on that side, but they look delicious. Um, and I'll leave them in a little bit longer, and, and um, you can see them rising there. Um, get them a little bit browner on the other side. Then I will brush them with um, butter, and they'll be yum -o. Okay, so I've just got my um, rice ready to uh, already dished up. Um, I'm just about to dish up my curry, sorry about that. And um, this is a bit of a manic time right now to get it all on the plate and hot. Uh, and here I have some melted butter and a, I have a little paintbrush here. So as soon as those naan breads are good to come out, I will paint them, brush them with some butter. I'm gonna um, put some curry onto our plates and then we're good to go. Okay, so these are looking pretty good. That back one there is puffed up really nicely. I think that if I turn it over, it'll probably be... Uh, oh, flip, it's hot. Um, ouch. Yeah, they're good to go. I'm gonna grab some tongs and pull them out. Okay, so here my naan bread's all ready to go. That's the first three. And dinner. Dinner. Dinner is served.